Good afternoon everyone, my name is Richard Todd, I'm from the University of Auckland and today I'll be talking about my own research in the Department of Chemical Materials Engineering about a thing called subcritical water extraction and how we can use that type of extraction to get compounds like antioxidants out of food and horticultural waste. I'll be talking about how using this technology we can move away from using toxic solvents, we can invest in a new industry in New Zealand worth billions of dollars worldwide, improving our industrial capacity, as well as taking valuable compounds from something as simple as waste, and we're using only water as a solvent. We're going to talk about how it's cleaner, greener, safer, more effective, and more selective than traditional solvents. Now, this may seem a bit far-fetched, but the chemistry and science behind it is actually very simple. So let's talk about some of the problems we're facing first. There's no quick fix for saving the environment. That's the first thing to talk about. We've seen a lot of ideas today and in the past few years about ways in which we can improve our environment. But there's no one way to do it. And this is an example of something in a niche industry which will improve dramatically that particular industry's environmental footprint. Other problems we have to look at include the solvents that we use in extraction, they're toxic and they're extremely bad for our environment. They can also be costly and poor at their job. What's more, too many of our, of our ideas for helping the environment and helping our economy are simply too time consuming and too expensive for something on New Zealand scale. And that's something we have to consider. Furthermore, plant waste. Plant waste actually contains many valuable compounds but most of it is simply going to landfill. However, with every problem, we have a number of opportunities. Opportunities including new technology for extraction and new technologies which will be eco-friendly, more effective at their job, more selective, and cheaper. Another opportunity we have is with antioxidants and bioactive compounds, which I'm sure many of you have heard a lot about. They're health promoting compounds, and they're worth a lot of money. So we want to be able to extract these wherever we can. Furthermore, with new technologies in extraction, we can reduce waste. We can also improve the quality of our food and our health by using these compounds as much as possible. And furthermore, we can introduce a brand new industry to our agriculture and horticultural sector in the form of bioactive extraction. So let's take a step back. Oh, sorry. Let's look at the big picture. What am I talking about? New methods such as subcritical water extraction and supercritical fluid extraction. Now, it's a bit of a mouthful, but as I've said, it's actually a simple process of using high temperature and high pressure compounds as our solvents rather than toxic materials. And we're going to be using them to extract valuable products from what would otherwise be going to waste. So let's take a step back and talk about what is extraction. Now, you're probably all familiar with it in some way or another. Extraction is simply a way of separating and isolating compounds that we desire um, from, from a solvent. And the thing is, we've been doing this for millennia. Whether it's extracting out dyes uh, from shellfish, as they did in ancient times, or whether it's extracting out flavours and tastes from tea bags and our cup of tea. What the process of extraction simply is, is being able to separate compounds and what we have is a solute. Now that's the thing that we're trying to extract, be it caffeine, tea, or antioxidant compounds, and a solvent. And that's the fluid that we're, we're using to actually do the extracting. Now extraction can be on the small scale in a test tube, or on a much larger scale, such as this factory. However, as I've said, the science is very straightforward. And it's to do with a compound's polarity. Now, the polarity of a molecule is how it is influenced by an electric field. I, many of you would have done the experiment in science where you get a balloon, you perhaps rub it on your hair to get that static, static electricity. And then when you put it by running water, you'll find that the water will actually bend towards the balloon. Because water is polar. It has a positive end and a negative end. So it's influenced by that electric field. And it's polarity that's the basis behind extraction and solubility. If our solvent and our solute have similar polarities, 
then the solute will want to migrate and move towards that solvent. So that's how we do it. Caffeine is a polar molecule, and so caffeine in water will be extracted out of the coffee beans and into the water. So similar polarities give us good solubility. And if things are soluble in each other, we can extract them out. It's as simple as that. Here's a little example of a diagram. It's simply a way of extracting out what we want from the leftovers. Now, extraction in the modern world has a lot of problems. Traditionally, we've used water as our extractant. But in the modern industrial world, we use organic solvents, such as hexane and methanol. And these are toxic. They're ecotoxic, and they are completely unsuitable for anything we want to extract that's going to go towards human consumption, be that food, medicine, supplements, and so on. So they're simply not worth our time if we're going to be extracting food. The cleanup costs are incredibly high, as well as the stringent regulations about, for example, leftover solvent in our product, as well as consumer backlash against using um, toxic and unsuitable solvents. So what we need is something more modern, more eco-friendly, and more friendly to our bodies. And that's where the first of these technologies comes in, supercritical fluid extraction. Now, it's quite a mouthful, but what supercritical fluids are uh, is this region up here. Above a certain temperature and a certain pressure, known as the critical point, um, a fluid stops behaving as like a gas or a liquid, but rather has the properties of both, known as a supercritical fluid. And in this phase, it's got very high density, but very unusual properties. And what we can find it with a supercritical fluid, by adjusting the pressure and by adjusting the temperature, we can change some of its properties. And one of the properties we can change is its polarity. So remember how I said it's the polarity of a solvent that affects what it can extract. So when it comes to supercritical fluids, if we adjust the pressure and we adjust the temperature, we can tune it to extract out exactly what we want. Now, one of the most common supercritical fluids used for extraction is carbon dioxide. It's cheap, it doesn't catch fire, it's got a reasonably low critical point, and it's effective at its job, but unfortunately it's non-polar. So if we want to extract out bioactive compounds, compounds that are going to affect our body, which are polar, we actually have to add in modifiers like methanol into the carbon dioxide in order to extract out compounds for our bodies. So it doesn't really work for things like antioxidants, for things like bioactive compounds. So it's not particularly suitable. However, what is a lot more suitable is the use of subcritical water. Now, this is what I'm working on at the University of Auckland. Subcritical water is water below that critical point. So it's above the boiling temperature, but the pressure's high enough so it stays as a liquid. Now, with subcritical water, all we have to do is adjust the temperature, adjust the temperature of our reaction vessel, and we find that we can adjust the polarity of the water. So essentially, we can fine tune the water's polarity simply by adjusting the temperature. And by fine tuning the polarity, we can pick out exactly what compounds we want to extract. So it's a very, very powerful technique. But it's also brand new. This entire process wasn't even conceived of until the 1990s. So there are currently no functional plants in the world. But water, as you can see, and as you can imagine, it's cheap. It's available everywhere, and it's completely non-toxic. So as a solvent for extraction, it's perfect for anything we want to be putting into our bodies, be it for medicine, food, and so forth. So let's now look at what we actually want to extract, antioxidants. Many of you would have heard of antioxidants and some of the health claims around that. And believe me, there are a number of them. However, we, in recent years, people like TV doctors and self-help books have overblown some of the claims for antioxidants. But what research is finding that antioxidants, by absorbing free radicals of oxygen that attack our cells and our bodies, do actually have a beneficial effect on our health. 
and may even assist in preventing aging and degenerative illnesses. It's known as the French paradox, why the French people uh, drink a lot of red wine and yet have fewer health issues. So subcritical water can be extracted, uh, so subcritical water can be used to extract antioxidants faster, cleaner, cheaper, and more effectively. Economically, water has a low operating cost. Feedstock can be any, food, any uh, plant waste, and that includes vineyard waste. We also have very huge revenue, over $30 per gram in some cases. So what I looked at was vineyard waste. New Zealand produces over 45,000 tonnes of grape mark. These are extremely rich in antioxidants. And the reason is because of our ozone layer. It's a, it's a silver lining in the cloud. Our hole in the ozone means that our plants are much more rich in antioxidants than anywhere else on the planet. This 45,000 tonnes represents hundreds of millions of dollars worth of exports, and it's an industry we've barely tapped. It can provide hundreds of high-skill and low-skill jobs. Meanwhile, the remaining waste can simply be composted. So antioxidants, they're valuable to our health, they're valuable to our economy, and these new methods allow us to extract them without fear of using poisonous solvents. They're bad for us, whereas with subcritical water or supercritical fluids, we can extract them without worry of toxicity and without any of the environmental problems we have with traditional solvents. So in conclusion, this is a real technological advance that directly reduces harmful chemical use. And it's a real technology that we can implement in New Zealand any time. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Um, Richard, is there any proof that antioxidants taken in extract form are beneficial? Yes, yeah, there's a number of research papers. All antioxidants are taken in extract form, um, and that's how they're used, for example, in fortifying yogurts and in supplements. The prop, the, the, uh, All antioxidants aren't taken in extract form. Most they're of them, eaten with food. Well, yes, in the sense of red wine and stuff. But in terms of things like vitamins and supplements, it's the antioxidants themselves that are extracted out and used, for example, in foods that have antioxidant claims in them. As far as I know, there's very, very little scientific research to show that supplements make any difference one way or the other. No, no, that's Expensive not... Expensive urine, as they say. No, not, not quite true. You're thinking of claims... Recently, people talked about superfoods being debunked. Now, that, of course, is a myth. There's no such thing as a superfood. But antioxidants themselves are phenolic compounds, and the way they act in the body is chemically by absorbing out, as I've said, oxygen-free radicals, and in some cases, in fact, influencing our proteins in our bodies. But there is evidence, is there not, that a food is more than the sum of its parts? In other words, antioxidants work in the context of the food, but not in the context of an isolated tablet. Actually, that's not really the case. What we find in food is that most of the antioxidants aren't really taken up so much, but in a concentrated form, they have a much higher uptake. The French don't take red wine and cheese pills, though, do they? <laughs> not, that I, not that I'm aware of, no. <laughs> However, the red wine is a good point, and that's why I considered vineyard waste, because grapes have been known to be a very high source of antioxidant, and New Zealand grapes have the highest anti antioxidant content in the world. So by using our natural grapes that we just have, our grape waste lying around... And subjecting them to an unnatural process. Well, not at all. Just using water, just using high-pressure, high-temperature water and nothing more, we can isolate the compounds that are most effective in our body and we can then use them in medicines, in foods or directly take them. This, um, this process sounds very energy-expensive. Well, that's actually part of my research. I'm doing an economic analysis, a technical analysis, and environmental. And while it is perhaps more energy intensive than traditional solvents, one of the things I use, it's from the American EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, and it's called the Waste Reduction Algorithm. And what that does is it takes a chemical process and it identifies all of the aspects 
um, affecting the environment that a process would use, such as its carbon footprint, its ecotoxicity, um, its energy intensivity. And even assuming that all of the energy generation is from burning coal, we still find that subcritical water has a lower waste reduction algorithm, so a, a, a lower environmental footprint than using traditional solvents, which of course come from oil anyway. Thank you. Thank you.